Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, April 20th, 2020. Mr. O here. And I decided that I was going to start doing a brief video every morning for you, just like we do in the classroom. If you remember from it seems like way back when, normally you would arrive between 8 and 8.15, and then after that we would all come into our circle and gather. And in that gathering we would talk about our daily schedule, and we would usually do a brief lesson for the whole class. So I'm going to try to replicate that with these brief videos today. Today's will probably be a little bit longer because I'll explain some things, but as we do this day in and day out, you'll get more accustomed to it and the videos will be more brief, just like our brief gathering in the morning. And for those of you who are checking the time, I'll be sure to be done by 8.45. Um, that's a little inside joke. All right, so every Monday or the start of every week in the classroom, we would fill out our plan, right? And I have shared this plan with your parents so that you can have a new one for each week. Because it's tough for me to not be able to see all of the hard work that you are doing. So I thought this plan could be useful, one, to help you with organizing what you're going to do and set some goals and keep track of your progress. But also, at the end of the week, you could share this back with me and I could see all of the things that you have done during the five week days. So, just like normal, there's four things you need to do at the start of the plan. Who knows? Who can name all four of them? Processing time, processing time. Uh, yeah, you, Mr. O. Oh, uh, the four things you need to do, of course, you need to put your name up at the top. You need to put your day and date. And then last, but certainly not least, my goal for this week. Now, in the classroom, we use those goals to help us direct our work period. Now, your work period might be a little bit different at home, or maybe it's very similar. I don't know. My work period is a little bit different, but setting a goal for myself is helpful because it helps to remind me what it is I need to be doing, and it helps get me to accomplishing it. So go ahead and set a goal for this week. Try to remember to be specific. Maybe you can make it measurable. And, excuse me, definitely make it something that you can achieve at home. If you were to say, my goal this week is to do test tubes, well, that's going to be a little bit challenging because we, I haven't found, and neither have any Montessorians, found a way to replicate test tubes at home. But maybe your goal is to practice math and handwriting every day. That's specific, it's measurable, it's something you could do. So, start your Monday off at home just like you do at school. Do the four things on your plan. Now, another thing that I have just shared with your parents is something that I am calling um, our math talk. Now, math can't really talk, sadly, but if it could, it would be excited and it would be shouting at you with all of the fun things you could do with it. So, for today's math talk, I have created a little sheet that's called Find What Is Missing. So you, each one of you, you are detectives this morning. You need to find whatever number is missing to make these equations valid and true. Just like our math material, I color coordinated it. So green is the color of our units. So that's going to be where you begin. That's going to be the earliest version of our work. Blue, tens, that's going to be section two. It's going to get a little bit more challenging. And finally, red, hundreds, that's going to be the even most difficult section for you. Now, each one of you knows where you are in our math curriculum. The shelves are behind me. But for this work, I invite everyone to start in green. Now, if it doesn't feel like a challenge for you, that's okay. It's a good way to warm up your brain and start to stretch those cognitive uh, muscles and get your neurons firing. You'll warm up on the green. Maybe the blue is that right stretch challenge for you, maybe that's where you'll stop. Now, if that even still feels like a warm-up for you, get to that red and go ahead and fully challenge yourself. So today, it's going to be find what is missing. Now, if you look closely, there's only one, two, three, there's five equations in each of the three columns. I would ask 
that you not print this paper. One, it has green, blue, and red ink, and ink is expensive, and your parents' printers and printer toner is probably running low. It wouldn't take very much time for you to just simply copy these and do them in a notebook or a journal or whatever it is you're doing. Um, but go ahead and go and do find what's missing today. Remember, we always like to do a math and a language every morning before we get into some other juicy, big works. So, math talk. And then that language, I have a quick little demonstration. Use transition words to show order. Use transition words to show order. Trans transition words are really helpful tools in language to help order and sequence things. It's like our ordinal numbers work. It helps put things in the proper order so you know what's going to come at the beginning, in the middle, and finally at the end. So we're going to use these four transition words. First, next, then, last. Now, you're going to use those four transition words in order to put these four sentences in order. Because in their current order, they tell a jumbled story which makes no sense. The sentences are, scoop up some tadpoles in a jar. Go to a pond. Look in the water until you see a tadpole. Find a jar at your house. In this current order, these four sentences don't really tell a complete story. Um, but if you use these transition words, first, next, then, last, you can add them at the beginning of each sentence and reorganize them into their proper order. I encourage you to do the same thing <clears throat> as you are going to do with your math talk. Again, copy these sentences into that journal, notebook you have at home, and add the transition words at the beginning of each sentence and put it in the proper order. Now, for those of you who feel like this <clears throat> isn't enough of a stretch for you, um, I challenge you to come up with a four or more step set of instructions. Could be the steps to make your favorite breakfast. Could be the steps to do an art project. Could be the steps to, um, uh, to hatch a butterfly. Whatever it is, I encourage you to come up with those if you're looking for more of a challenge, but to still use our four transition words. And that reminds me, on Mondays in the afternoon, speaking of our schedule, we normally would have art. And I even included art. I left it on your daily planner for Monday. So Miss Rousseau has been working hard in this time away, and she put together some really cool projects for you that I've also shared with your parents. There's tie-dye your name, 3D foil figures, using aluminum foil cardboard and making three-dimensional figures, and Another one called the sun catcher, which involves watercolors, coffee filters, and making something similar to a, uh, like a stained glass window. It's, uh, it was my favorite of the three activities. So maybe carve out some time this afternoon for you to do those art projects like you normally would. All right, that's our morning gathering. But just to make it a little bit more interesting, I will wrap every one of these with a who am I animal statement. My neck and legs are very long, making me the largest living bird, but I cannot fly. I have very small wings, but large and strong legs, which make me a fast runner. I have only two toes on each foot. My lovely feathers are called plumes and are highly prized by humans. Who am I? Tune in tomorrow and I will reveal which animal that is. Have a great day. You can do it. We're all going to work hard. I look forward to hearing about how Monday goes.